Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Writebook, a new tool by Once, that's the 37 signals buy one time and you own it thing. I don't know, apparently we're reinventing the wheel, but it's a free product. You can download it to create ebooks, uh, you know, paywall and whatever if you want to. It's pretty cool, but it also comes with source code. Now, I thought it would be interesting if we looked at how to set this up both on your local machine as well as on a remote server. And then whenever they email you your code, you'll get something like this uh, for the link to actually do the setup. Uh, important to note, they tell you not to share it. So I've changed both of these so that they look a bit uh, more generic. Um, but they also give you the option to download the zip file with the complete source code. So if you want to like mess around with it, uh, take a look at it, I would highly recommend it. There's a lot to be learned there. Again, this is made by 37 Signals team. So you're looking at people that, you know, work with rails in, in a DHH sanctioned capacity. <laughs> so if there's something you're interested in learning, I'd take a look at that, maybe pick up a couple neat tricks. But as is always the case, setting it up the first time can go a little bit weird because I tried getting this up and running on a digital ocean droplet uh, and it didn't work right away. Now that wasn't a once issue, I guess technically maybe it could have been, uh, but it was more the, the droplet wasn't updated properly and a lot of the stuff on it was broken which can happen, you just recreate it. But we're gonna take a look at how to run this locally as well as on a server. So to run it locally, I'm gonna drop out of the server real quick. And we're just gonna get up to a point like this where you can do like your WYSIWYG editing, etc., for your book. Uh, and to do that, all we really have to do is, uh, we need Docker installed. So you're gonna go over to like the Docker hub or whatever it's called, and you're gonna download the, uh, or sorry, it's the Docker desktop client is what you're looking for. If you're on Windows, if you're not on Windows, you can just install Docker here. And then after you get all that set up with like WSL on Windows or just on your other server, you can then run Docker-V. As soon as you see this, you're good to go with the rest of the Once stuff. Once you have that, you can come over to the Once website, once.com slash writebook, click get it for free. They'll send you an email. Email will include a link. You're gonna copy that link and then you're gonna run the command in your terminal. That's going to grab the right book image. It's then going to start a container with that image. And then you're going to have a local version of this. The one thing to know is you're not putting in your domain name for this because you're running this locally. This is like a local host thing. So we're going to go ahead and run this real quick. Okay, so you should see something like this once you get it up and running. And then I'm just going to hit enter here so that this is completely blank. And then it should say preparing, downloading and starting. In my case, it's going to go a little bit faster because I already had the image downloaded. And then it's going to go ahead and start this. The start will take a little bit, but once it's started up, you can then go over to, uh, if I can do this real quick, uh, you can go over to localhost port 5555 and this will start your write book stuff. So here's my test book right here with test in case inside of it. You know, you can do whatever you want to and it'll just update over time. You can then publish your books, put them behind a paywall, etc. So that's neat, uh, but that's really not the, the hard part here, right? Like if you're trying to sell an ebook, you probably want to be able to host it online. So for that, we're gonna come over to DigitalOcean. For this, I have an affiliate code that lets you try DigitalOcean for two months. So you get like $200 credit over 60 days. And then if you spend 25 bucks at some point, they give me 25 bucks at no cost to you. It helps me make these videos. But more importantly, it lets you test this for a month or two. So you're not wasting your money as you try and build this out. Once you have that, you can then go ahead and start up a server. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the server because we don't need it right now. So let me destroy this, copy, paste, destroy. And we can come over to create. We're gonna create a droplet and I'm actually gonna full screen this while we're going through this process. I'm gonna go over to San Francisco because New York's been giving me some grievances today. Uh, I'm gonna go to Ubuntu, basic, I'll go to regular and I'll do the 12 bucks a month one. You could probably do six, I'm just doing 12 because I want to. We'll add an SSH key right here. And then we'll just say this is the workbook dash video, right? And then I wanna add this to the Dean and YouTube one so that I stop putting it in the project with my other servers because one of these days I'm gonna accidentally delete the wrong server after I'm done with the video. And then I'm gonna be a very, very sad panda. So this is gonna set up, the initial setup is pretty quick, but then it has to actually start the server. We're just waiting for this to set up enough for us to like get a provisioned IP address. And once we have an IP address here, we can then use this over on Cloudflare to start that setup process. So this will go through, we now have an IP address. Let's copy this, come over to Cloudflare. You're gonna go over to DNS and records. And then over here in the A record, if you don't have one, you can create one, just create an A record with the name of your domain name. And then you're just gonna put in the IP address of the server. In this case, I turn proxy off and the TTL to one. This just allows me to more quickly test and iterate. 
If you're properly setting this up, just set the proxy to on and set this to auto for your own server. This is just something because I'm constantly making new servers and using this domain name. I don't want it to be cached for too long so that I'm stuck in this endless loop. This just lets me very quickly set things up in, in a new way. So now that is pointed to that, uh, that server, the uh, DigitalOcean droplet will go ahead and spin up. We'll copy this, we'll come over here and we'll try to SSH in as root at and this IP address. Now this might take a few attempts, uh, but once you get this pop-up, you type yes, you'll hit enter and then it'll hopefully let you in here. Once you're in here, you're then gonna go ahead and copy that command from your email again. So you're just gonna copy this and you're just gonna run this command. Oops, you're going to run this command right here. Now, in my case, I have to run the command with the actual code, so I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, and again, we're just gonna type in the name of our domain, and in this case, it's busydevs.com. Hit enter. This might take a few attempts as well. Again, it's usually a caching issue that gets you here, um, but once this is up and running, we should then be able to just head over to busydevs.com to test this. So I guess I'll see you in a minute when this is uh, done doing its initial checkup. Okay, so it just now finished the initial check. Apparently the domain name is set up correctly. Now it's going to do a bit of a strobe light effect uh, as it prepares downloads and starts the server. At this point, I guess we can just come in here and I can show you what the zip file looks like. We can click on download, then we'll save this to, I don't know, somewhere. Writebook.zip sounds good to me. Go ahead and open this in a thing as soon as Brave allows me to. Maybe I'll just open up a Explorer window and we can test it in there. And come over to the downloads, right click and hit extract, click extract all. And then we can come over here, click extract. I'm realizing I'm doing the extract all in the wrong window, but there's really nothing to miss or there's nothing to see over here except for, uh, I think these are vintage story mods and uh, telegram setup uh, and a prominent RPG server pack. So yeah. Oh yeah, and the Inferno Cape because I just got that on RuneScape. Okay, once this is set up, you have your Rails code right here with your bin file and your app file. So we'll come into the app and then here you can see you got all of your, your basic stuff here that you can just take a look at. So I would recommend flipping through this if you're interested um, just to see sort of how they build their apps. But now we have this set up, we can come over here to busydevs.com and we can put in our information. I'll just do dean at example.com, password to password. Hit enter, this will take a second. That's your first run. And now if you come here and you do this, you should be able to just sign in. If you can't sign in, then I guess you're out of luck. And then you can make these books uh, public if you want to and go from there. So this again has your manual right here, which you can remove if you want to. It has a option to create a new book. So say test case authored by me. I think putting me there is, is funnier. Make the visibility to everyone. And then if we come over here, oops, if we come over here, Oh, I see. We have to come over here from locked and make it to everyone, I guess. And now maybe if we refresh, now we can see the book. And now you can see, you can click on it, get a table of contents, etc. So that's working. I just don't know how to use it. That's a problem with, with me and not with the software. <laughs> that's my bad. But yeah, so this allows you to locally develop it if you want to, locally run it. Uh, if, you have, if you have the source code, you can develop it. If you just want to run it locally, you can do that here, or you can run it uh, online which allows you to set all of these things up. Now that you can also like, you know, configure this and change it as you want to as time goes on. Um, and there is actually, I was looking at it, uh, there is a write book, uh, here it is, a video on tracking some, oops, tracking some of the changes in write book in your, in your Rails app. So I have a link to this in the video description if you wanna see how to sort of like hook into write book as well, because I thought this was a very helpful video. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, hopefully this was informative and helpful. Hopefully you learned something, maybe even if it's just the existence of this code base you could go look at. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.